More disturbing news on the vaping crisis. Chemicals found inside legal vaping cartridges. They include gasoline, antifreeze, even nail polish remover. Those are just a few of the things we learned were inside vaping products purchased all across southeast Wisconsin. The I-team took them to a lab to get answers about what's in those vape cartridges. I mean, I haven't done any research about it. So I'm not that concerned about it. Vapors we talked to didn't know what was inside their vapes. That is, until we told them. We found ethanol and ethyl acetate. Do you know what either of those are? I know what ethanol is, but that doesn't sound like it's good to be in your body. We brought four vaping products to a local lab. In addition to ethanol, the alcohol in beer and wine, the tests revealed ethyl acetate used in glue, acetone, the main ingredient in nail polish remover, and methanol, used as antifreeze and found in gasoline. It does make me think twice of like, Ooh, if I should keep doing it. At Laughing Grass, we know exactly what is in our products and public safety always comes first. Chemicals like these are why Matthew Wetzel of Laughing Grass Hemp tells his customers to know what they're buying. It is a, an epidemic that's, that's happening right here with specifically vape carts and vaping itself. Um, but I wanted people to come in and not be scared to talk to us about it. He pulled three vaping products from his shelves after an independent test found dangerous cutting agents. As far as vaping goes, you know, we still have a lot of research to do. That's why we've only used one cartridge and one vape product in our store. We had that one product tested as well and found a number of chemicals, including acetone and methanol. How do you feel about these results? I feel great about those results. All of them were under the nationally recommended limits. And some of the vapors we talked to aren't worried about what's in their cartridges. They feel vaping is better than smoking cigarettes. If I was smoking like three pods a day or like I was getting like juice from somebody online that I don't know, I'd be more concerned about it. You think but you I need to stop vaping? Uh, maybe someday, maybe someday. I like having nicotine sometimes. UW-Milwaukee environmental health science professor Hongbo Ma says that nicotine hooks people on something she feels isn't safer. When I looked at those chemicals, I, would, I was very kind of shocked to see people would start to inhale those directly. Whether it's nicotine, CBD, or just vaping for flavor, all the vapes we tested had chemicals Ma says shouldn't be inhaled. Specifically, she explains when heated and inhaled, ethanol goes directly to the bloodstream and brain in a matter of seconds. So people are potentially causing themselves brain damage with this? It could cause brain damage, yes. Ma bases her analysis of our test results on federal standards for workers who have to be exposed to these chemicals in a factory setting. There are no regulations for flash heating and inhaling chemicals. Anything that's not that is not oxygen or nitrogen should not be in the lungs. Dr. Luella Amos at Children's Wisconsin is deeply concerned about the short and long term effects of teen vaping. People are coming back and they're not quite perfect. You know, they're they're still not at the baseline that they were before um, they were using e cigarettes. She and the doctors at Children's want lawmakers to change the legal age for purchasing vape products from 18 to 21. I feel like it's a crusade that we should all take together to prevent e-cigarette use in our youth. Legislation to raise the vaping age to 21 has been introduced in Madison, but it hasn't yet made it out of committee. Illinois and 17 other states have raised both the vaping and smoking age from 18 to 21. For the I-Team, I'm Casey Geraldo.